Hi everyone, it's Dave Hepworth here from Computer World. I'm joined with Henry Bird. Good afternoon. He's our account executive here and I'm on the wireless engineers. Uh, and we'll be talking about Ruckus Wireless and Ruckus Wireless and Wi-Fi for schools. So we're just coming back from BET 2015. Great event. Yep. Henry and I attended. Uh, we've met a lot of interesting uh, teachers and schools. Uh, and really we're just here to talk about Ruckus Wireless and how that can benefit schools. Yep. Uh, what was the kind of main interest of the wireless you noticed at the schools, Ben? Well, uh, personally, for, for, personally ben? for me, uh, it was my first, uh, first year at BAT. I uh, had a really good uh, day on the Thursday. Uh, I was actually on the Dell stand uh, on the Thursday, so I don't know if you saw me in my uh, nice bright pink uh, polo they got us to wear, but, uh, but for me, generally the trend of, uh, of the week and certainly the feedback I've had from a number of my customers uh, was the whole wireless piece and the, the yeah. connectivity, uh, BYOD, all this sort of uh, buzzwords you do here. It's becoming more and more of a uh, sort of project that people are going to have to focus on in yeah. the next couple of uh, well, coming months, shall I say. So, uh, yeah, that was really, for me, a key focus. Great. Excellent. And that, that kind of summarises it. For, for us, mainly at the stand, we were obviously there with Ruckus Wireless and Computer World. Uh, big, big interest in, in how we can make wireless better because it's going to be such a key key part of the, the education system. We've got the MP, of edu uh, the MP for education. She was talking about how important connectivity is in schools and why this is obviously a key part of that. So what we notice when we're talking to a lot of schools is, and what we already know is the kind of the challenges they're facing. So we're going to be talking a little bit at the start today. So we're going to be, the agenda is we're going to be talking about the challenges that schools face in the wireless world. And then we're going to do how Ruckus Wireless actually combats those challenges and, and how we can make it better for you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at some of the functionality on the Ruckus Wireless kit. So what that will mean is we'll look at some of the processes of, of how uh, certain features work. Because I think it's important for, for you, the viewers, to actually see how the Ruckus Wireless kit works and how easy it is to use. And then we'll, summary, we'll finish off with of actually how Computer World works with Ruckus and how Computer World can work with the schools and, and start the process of, of seeing if Ruckus is the right fit for you, which, which we hope we think it will be, to be honest. Definitely. I mean, yeah, for me, it'd be good to get an understanding, obviously, some of those features. Um, I mean, what the conversations I was having at the Bet Show with a number of people uh, was the, the challenges in having a number of devices uh, in a high sort of density area, a number of students, possibly one, two, even three devices per head being able to stream such uh, a strong well, HD um, quality sort of video streaming uh, without any sort of uh, interference, downtime, that sort of thing. So that for me is, a, is to be able to get a key understanding of how Ruckus can uh, can sort of spearhead that and help out in education. Yeah, excellent. And if anyone, anyone's wondering where Barry Coombs, our pre-sales director is today, unfortunately he is here, he's just behind the camera, he uh, lost his voice. So he will be answering any questions during the WebEx. So if you've got any questions, do ping them over and Barry will be letting us know and we'll get to them as quickly as we can. So uh, challenges we're facing in the wireless education. So Henry, this is something we, we talked a lot about. We, we're talking to a lot of customers about. Uh, coverage is, is key. So everyone's talking about coverage. We're going to be going one-to-one -one or BYOD. We need to make sure there's no area in the school that hasn't got wireless coverage. So it's indoors and outdoors. So that's going to be key we cover and how Ruckus Wireless does that and does it easily. Mm -hmm. Reliability is key. We need a re reliable, robust solution because this is something that's going to be installed now for schools, but it's got to last five, seven years. And we know that it's got to last and be able to take into consideration the growth of wireless devices because it's only going to get bigger. And it, so it's got to be robust. And, and that's, like we say, consistency of scale. And another feature for the item, well, another concern when, when we're talking to a lot of head teachers or head of departments is the security and, monitor, and monitoring. Because we're going to be letting a lot more people on the network with a lot of devices. How do we keep that secure and how do we monitor it? And that could be anything like guest access for parents, bring your own device access for students and staff. So we'll cover that and, and how Ruckus combats that and gives you an effective way of solving that problem. And then we also talked a lot about this key, huge topic at the BET show was bring your own device and how can we support multiple devices and how can we get them onto the network as easily as possible and give them a reliable connection because what we need to have, we don't want phone calls to the IT department, we've all experienced it, phone calls to the IT department of the wireless isn't working, we've got a whole environment to look after, we need to make sure the wireless is installed and doing its job and it's doing its job for the next five to seven years. So we'll cover how Ruckus does that for schools. And then finally, ease of management. Ease of management is, is really important, Henry. Mm. You'll notice that now and now, unfortunately, IT departments are getting less and less. So we need to make sure there's a piece of kit in there or software that's easy to manage and maintain. And you don't need uh, to go off on a two-week course to be able to learn how to use it. Mm. And definitely, building that reliable uh, wireless for the future, but also taking into consideration 
some of the past um, devices that students might be bringing into the school is covering that whole plethora of devices yeah. um, from, from past to previous to the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. So as we said, like it's the post-PC era. We know the whole world's going Wi-Fi, and Ruckus were completely aware of this. Ruckus knew that they had to build a piece of hardware that was robust enough to be able to cope with the in increase in devices. So bear in mind, in the education front, we're looking at, at the minute, we, we had no, no devices on the network. It was very limited, and you had like B and G access points, which we'll come on to in a minute. But what we do know now is in schools, we're going to have more e-readers, more smartphones, more tablets, more ultrabooks, projectors, everything. Everything at some point is has got a wireless segment or a wireless piece to it. So we need to make sure that the environment we're putting the APs into now, or the access points we're putting into that environment rather, can cope with the increase of wireless devices. And Ruckus Wireless has really come up with a piece of hardware that, that can do that. So we're looking at maybe a student might have one device per person at the moment. Can, can we limit that? Are we able to make it so it's easier to limit the number of devices per student? The answer with Ruckus Wireless is yes, but when we do need to increase that, we, we need to be able to make sure that, that AP is robust enough to cope for that. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's where we're at with the, the world is going Wi-Fi. So, talking to most of the schools, one of the challenges they've said is they've been told that they're going to have to have more devices, they're going to have more students who bring your own device, and instantly the headache appears, we need to have more access points. Mm -hmm. And, and we now, now we're going to, what you can see on, your, on the screens now, the pictures, we're going to kind of go back to the fundamentals of wireless. So, how are we going to solve the problem? Do we, do we get more access points? That, that's something, I think you, you had a lot of customers yeah. say that they've done that? Yeah, you, you know, you get the, uh, like I said, a lot of customers, yeah. um, when they think they're bringing on more devices, it's going to give you a case of throwing out more APs. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It's creating more traffic. Um, and this is why obviously Ruckus can hopefully uh, simplify that and decrease the amount of APs, but bring out the performance. Yeah. So it's not just a case of throwing up uh, extra sort of tin on the, on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we're looking at, so wireless access points. As you all know, some of you will know this, some of you won't. We, we had a lot of people that are using Ruckus come up to the stand and been happy with it and we're, we're kind of hopefully cater for you guys in, in the coming slides. But for this, it's just going back to like the fundamentals of wireless. It, it's half duplex. So only one person can talk at a time and we need to get people on and off that access point as quickly as possible. Uh, so one theory was that if we get more access points, that's going to help with the situation. But what you've got to bear in mind is, is we're going to simply talk about RF. So if we've got lots of access points, then we've got lots of APs that are giving off lots of RF. And when I say lots of RF, they're kind of emitting this energy a bit like a light bulb effect. So they've got this access point, it's emitting RF energy, and that, that's causing, that's an area of, let's say, noise. So, we, so we've got all these APs that are kind of interfering with each other, getting in each other's way, and making it difficult to hear client devices speak to that AP. Because we've always got to go back to that, that's fundamental that when you're talking to the access point, and you're in that area, be it channel 1, 6 or 11, or in the 5 gigahertz range of different 40 channels, it, it, once you're in that, when you're in that same channel group, only one of you can talk at a time. And with schools and with high density environments, especially in the education sector, you're going to have more APs. It's, it's inevitable. But we've got, to work, we've got to be clever and we've got to work out how can we reduce the number of APs, but, but do that by controlling the RF. So what you can see on the diagram right now is a bit of a kind of a wireless engineer's nightmare. We've got lots of access points. They're all overlapping. They're all gonna, there's going to be overlaps of different channels, and that's going to be difficult for devices to be actually be able to be heard or speak to other access points. And because of that, we've noticed, we know that lots of schools call us and say, well, we've got, we bought more access points, but actually our wireless performance has, has decreased and it's got worse. Yeah. Or they've got access points that are running B or G or kind of more legacy standard that just aren't built to, to cope for high density. So what we're looking at is we, we, we need to know what, what's the problem, what's the fundamental problem. And the, the, the fundamental problem is interference. So people used to tell you the source of interference might be a microwave oven or a baby monitor or a Bluetooth headset or whatever, you know, kind of minimal, minimal interference. The actual primary source of interference in the wireless infrastructure is other access points. So the more access points you have, the more interference you've got. Uh, and then it's, it's kind of like this just, uh, you're in a, an endless battle and people think that they always need to get more access points. But when they do that, unless you've got a, a solid system that can control RF, you're going to have problems with, yeah. with connectivity. Okay, so then we're going to why we work with Ruckus Wireless at Computer World and why we suggest all schools, especially high density environments, work with Ruckus Wireless. And it really goes down to uh, Ruckus Wireless's painted techno te technology, uh, which is called Beamflex. Right, okay. 
Uh, a lot of the people that visit the stand had were aware of Beamflex and some weren't. So we're just going to quickly re revisit this because this is the kind of fundamental difference of why every Ruckus AP on the market is better performing than, than uh, a standard access point. So we'll look what you can see at the minute is if you look on the right hand side of the, of the, the, the PowerPoint picture is you've literally got the, the blue access points a bit like you saw in the previous diagram and you've got these basic service areas. So every access point on the market at the minute other than ruckus wireless APs, emit RF energy like a light bulb. So focus RF energy around, uh, and that, that's just a, a huge area. It's called a basic service area that if you walk into, you will get a connection, and then you're, then you're away. You, you've got an access point. You're connected to an access point. You, you'll say your bit, and then it'll once you finish, it'll go on to the next person, and it, it'll just keep going around. What Ruckus did differently, and this is this is just a, a complete game change, was to say, well, why don't we make it so we can control the RF? So why don't we make it so if someone, now if you look on the diagram on the left, if someone walks into that basic service area, why don't we make it so in a Ruckus access point, we can actually focus RF energy directly towards that user uh, and make it so we're just focusing all, all our listening power, I guess you could say, directly to that person. So a lot of people are kind of question, well, how, how do we do that? You know, how is that possible? And it's done by the fact that in Ruckus APs, or any standard AP, you might have three antenna elements inside a, a normal omnidirectional AP. Within Ruckus APs, we've got a higher number of antennas within the actual form factor. And we've also got a number of parts of software that mean that we can actually create custom patterns mm -hmm on a, a per client per station basis. So, so what that means is if you start walking in an environment or start changing where you are in that environment, the actual radio can adapt and follow you, the, the user. Okay. So that, that's meaning that we've then got, because of that, we've got a far greater range, so far greater coverage. But the clever bit is what we do is we actually create interference on the remaining section. So if you imagine on where you can see in those, in the blue uh, circles of the purple and the yellow green kind of like lasers going out at different angles is what we're doing is we're, we're focusing energy towards the client and then creating interference in the remaining uh, area which means that other access points can use that space so there's not all this, this there's less interference so there's more space for other access points to talk to clients okay uh, we've got some great questions coming in here this is uh, barry coons with a very husky voice yeah um the, the first one that is relevant relative at the moment is could you discuss <coughs> the difference between beam flex versus being forming when you have 100% AC clients? Yeah, okay, really good question. So AC is the, the latest standard. Uh, there's, we're currently at a, AC wave one and we've got AC wave two. So chip-based beam forming is a standard, it actually came out on 2.11n, um, but it wasn't standardized. So each uh, vendor had their own version of, of how, uh, how they would how they would focus RF energy directly towards a, a client. Um, so that, that's a standardization, but chip-based beamforming works in a, a bit of a different uh, scenario. That If you had three antenna elements inside your access point, uh, it will send three pulses of RF energy towards that client. So when they reach that, that end device, that they'll be in phase. So when we talk about in phase, we mean, uh, imagine like the kind of waves going up and down, a bit like a, a, or, or side to side. It, it's gonna, they're gonna meet, meet that client at the same time, which means that they get a more directional RF focus towards that client. Um, so to answer that question, that's great. If AC is talking to AC, you will get a chip-based beam forming, which will focus. But, and we will be doing deeper dives on this, so we will be doing later webinars. But what, what the difference is, is with Ruckus adaptive antenna, is we we're actually using a separate system to focus RF energy towards that client. And then we can also use a system called spatial streams, which means we can, we can send more data using multiple RF elements uh, at the same time. Whereas when you're using chip-based beamforming, you, you can only do one or the other. So you've got spatial streams, which is a, another standard, and then you've got chip-based beamforming you can't use both at the same time. So Ruckus is the only kit that can benefit from chip-based beamforming, which will work, only in, get enhanced with adaptive antennas, but it will also be able to do spatial streaming at the same time. So with the Ruckus adaptive antenna, which is painted, we can, we can mitigate more interference, so we're better at interference control, and we, we dynamically follow the client. Whereas with chip-based beamforming, it's more of a uh, kind of repeat back basis, so you, it's a constant feedback from the client. So you do get focus off energy, but it's it's not as as direct and it's not as uh, well performing. I think an important element, <coughs> I think an important element to consider yep. is we're probably a long way off 
having a complete AC client base. Yes. And in the meantime, yep. we need to mix the technologies. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, one of the other questions is, in terms of density and using AC technology, yep. do you get more density compared to the APGN type uh, wireless networks? Okay, uh, we will be doing a, a, another, another deep, good question. We will be doing deeper dives on uh, the difference between AC. So AC, is, we're getting faster speeds. We go, we can kind of go back a stage. So it's the different type of modulation. So we've got 64 QAM, which was what N used to work at, and now we've got 256 QAM. Um, that's that's so the data rates are better. So we get better speeds. But with QA, uh, with AC, we need to have better RF control to be able to get those faster data rates. With regards to higher density, um, it will just mean that you're getting faster speeds. So you could, there would be an argument to say, yes, uh, you're, you're going to have quicker data rates, but then you're still going to have the same issues with density. It's just, it's just a faster way of um, ha having fast speeds, if that makes sense. But we will cover that in a, in a, a later webinar. And the, the final question here is, how many users can you get per AP, irrelevant of what technology? And I think the important part, point here is it mm. depends on the access points you're putting out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Ruckus has a wide range of different access points. Yeah, Barry's right. So we do, with regards to how many APs, uh, how many devices you can have per AP, it, it really does vary. So with Ruckus APs, we can have anything from 500 devices per client, if that they're on an unauthenticated traffic. If it's like WPA2 traffic, we're looking at 256 clients. But then if you've got 30 to 40 clients that are all streaming high definition, uh, APs can only process so much data. But then what you've got to look at is how good is my access point at processing that and moving on to, to the next client? And how good is it? Is it using that RF? to use the, uh, to allow as many clients to connect to that AP or load balance to other APs in that environment. Uh, so with Ruckus APs, you can do anything, the maximum is 500 clients per AP. But again, I, I've got to stress that would be on unauthenticated traffic. So that's unencrypted traffic. Okay. So I hope that's answered your questions. Do keep them coming in. I will keep trying to answer them as best I can. We will be doing more and more deeper dives with regards to different technology. This is just to give you a kind of good overview of why Ruckus Wireless performs so well in the schools. Uh, so we'll move on to the next slide. So hopefully, if we everyone, if I just go back for a second, I, I was about to say if everyone can say yes, but you won't be able to. Uh, if everyone, hopefully everyone gets the reason why Ruckus Wireless uh, is, is better. It's with the, the Beamflex technology, which means that we've got better listening uh, capabilities to that client device, which means we control the RF, which means we can listen to someone, get them on and off the segment as quickly as possible, and then that way we can go on to the next person. And that what that results in for you, the customer and, and the school, is we know that we've got a robust and reliable uh, environment. We can actually use less APs. So with less access points, we, we need less PoE. Uh, going back to one of the questions about AC earlier, uh, bear in mind, uh, Ruckus wireless access points are the only access point, AC access points in the market that can use uh, 802.3 uh, sorry, yeah, 2.3 AF uh, power consumption. So that's the lowest power consumption. Uh, and then with that, with the Ruckus kit, you're using less PoE switches or less PoE ports. You've got better performance. You've got reliable connectivity. You've got a system that's made for high density environments. You've got less interference, and and you've got more RF control. And that's the key. It's it's the it's all about control of RF. Simplicity as well, isn't it? I mean, absolutely. It's a constant headache. Absolutely. Like you said, bringing the AC uh, the access points down brings the switch count down. Yeah. Bringing everything down and less of a headache, keeping it more simple. Yeah, absolutely. So features to improve performance. So it's all good and well having this, this the super engine inside the AP, but you, you need to have the brains behind it to, to actually get it to do what it does. So Ruckus has got a number of features uh, that are introduced to actually give you the, the, the ultimate um, system that copes for high density. Uh, another thing to bear in mind is with all the features, Henry, and all, all the people that are watching now, is all the features that come with Ruckus uh, are part of the service. So as, as long as you've bought the controller, you've got the support contract, which you need to purchase anyone when you purchase a controller, all the features come part of the, the firmware updates. So there's no hidden licenses, no hidden costs. No, that's it. It's literally three lines on a quote. It's yep. your, your controller, your access points, and your support. There isn't any hidden licenses, any hidden sort of stingers, so to speak. Yeah, it's, it's, again, simple. Yeah, absolutely. So big kit, big player. Uh, this is another thing that Ruckus has painted technologies. Is it's called adaptive polarization diversity, which is a bit of a mouthful. So you could, you could just call it Beamflex Plus, which is what the the Ruckus name for it is. 
Uh, and Beamflex Plus is, is, is all about listening. So it's all about, we've got these, uh, the, the whole environment of wireless has changed fundamentally. So it's, it's how APs listen. So if you think back when we were using wireless access points, we just had a laptop, you'd sit on your desk and it wouldn't move. And then the RF waves would leave that access point, bounce around the, work, the walls, wherever it needed to get to, to get to the AP. But the actual polarization or the, the, the way that, that that RF wave is moving through the air wouldn't actually change. Uh, and with standard access points, they can only listen at one polarization at a time. One station can only listen at one polarization at a time. So what that means is it can only listen horizontally or vertically, which you can see on the on the PowerPoint slide there, at a time. So Ruckus, the, the really clever guys at Ruckus in California said, well, why don't we make it so we can make it so our access points can listen uh, at any angle, any diversity, at any point. So if you imagine you've got like a 360 degree protractor that's creating all these patterns for people to be able to speak uh, to the APs in like a custom pattern. Imagine like another 360 degree kind of element uh, slotted in, so you've got one sitting vertically and horizontally. That means that when RF waves hit that access point, it can, it can understand it, it can process that uh, instantly, mm -hmm. rather than it being said, I need you to resend that packet because then I need to adjust what diversity uh, or polarization the, uh, the radios inside the APR. Um, so bear this in mind for schools, this is a huge, huge benefit. This is, means that you've got your tablets, your iPhones, your smart devices, that you've got all the children uh, or, or students or staff using the, the, the smart devices. When they're changing the diversity or the polarization of the, of the device, that's not going to affect performance. We actually get better performance with Ruckus. And then this is a pain to technology, so no other AP can, can actually match this, this technology. Um, and that's, again, it's... it's it's all about the fundamentals of making it so we can get someone on and off the access point as quickly as possible. And we can do that because bear in mind your smart devices, like your wireless device, or your uh, it's wireless device, they're all wireless devices, but your, your tablets or your, your iPhones, they uh, have less um, RF, uh, what you could say is elements inside those devices, so they have like a lesser voice, so they're not as loud. So if you've got an AP that is able to actually digest and understand what that 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 device is saying from a greater distance because of the, the adaptive polarization diversity. Uh, it's only going to make life easier when you're talking to other device uh, when you're in a high density environment, which which is what Ruckus is designed all around high, high density environments. Okay. So, so that's uh, PDMRC, which again we're going to be doing deeper dives. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of deep dives for those people that are interested in wireless. Um, but for now, that that's Beamflex Plus, which comes as standard with all the access points that are now on the market for the AC range. Uh, Beamflex Plus is is standard. Uh, so channel fly, we'll, we'll scan over this, uh, no, no pun intended for people who know that channel fly, what channel fly is, but channel fly, uh, we're going to go, <laughs> we're going to go over it as, as quickly as we can, because I just want to make sure we try and keep this as, as short as, as possible. Uh, so channel flies, imagine when you used to have your environment where you literally had to monitor all the channels, you got all, all these increased APs and, and you didn't want to have certain channels overlapping. Because mm -hmm. if we have channels overlapping, then we get problems with interference, which is as simple as that. It's just, it's, we, we, it's just, we don't, we want to have a certain space between each channel to get the best performance. So you might have found it when you go home and you've got your, you have your Virgin route or your Sky Home Hub in, installed and then the engineer who installs it will look for a channel that's got more space than other channels than, you, than your next door neighbours. It, that's basically what the, the Ruckus controller is going to do for you on a, on a constant 24-7 basis. And this, this is switched on by default on all the Ruckus controllers. So all the APs will speak to each other through the controller. Uh, and what they're basically going to do is they can continuously monitor the environment and make sure that every AP is on the, the best channel to give that client device or the clients connected to that, that radio the, the best throughput. And it, and it will continuously do that. So what we find in schools is you install it, it will take about four hours to, to eight hours to, to, to work out what the best environment is, and it will sit. But the nice thing is if there's any interference or anything comes into that environment to change that, all your radios will adapt. You, it, gone are the days where you need an IT member to walk around the site scanning what channels channels are going on. So Channel Fly, worth its weight in gold. If people have got more questions on Channel Fly, we, we can answer those on, a, on another webinar. Um, but what it's basically doing is it's just scanning the environment. Uh, it's doing it in Ruckus Wireless's unique way of doing that, uh, which means that we're getting, again, best performance, which is ideal for high, dens high density student environments. Um, band steering. <coughs> band steering is basically as you can see in the, in the, on the PowerPoint slide there, every device 
previously was 2.4 gigahertz. So we had all these people trying to speak in this kind of like sound cloud, you could say, of 2.4 gigahertz, which gets really congested. So it's like a, it's like having a packed assembly, everyone trying to talk at the same time and everyone talking in the kind of exactly the same uh, accent. There was no way of kind of differentiating from them from at all. Uh, and that became really difficult. So then we had the 5 gigahertz. So now we've got more devices that are kind of uh, 5 gigahertz. We've got A and, a and uh, AC and N that are working on 5 gigahertz. So now we've got different frequencies that we can work at um, to free up space in the already kind of congested 2.4 gigahertz range. So what Rockest did, again, the, cl the clever guys in California said, well, why don't we make it? So we've got our APs that will tell the devices if they can work on 2.4 gigahertz. That's great, but if they can work on 5 gigahertz, we'll switch you over to 5 gigahertz and then we'll make it so you're with channel fly getting the best observed throughput, the best channel, and again, getting on and off the access point as, as quickly as possible. So this was another key feature from Ruckus Kit uh, and it basically means you're, you're going to get the best performance for that environment. Uh, bear in mind, it's, this is not going to affect the client devices. It's not going to, this is going to happen by default. You don't have to worry about it. It's just it's installed in the access point. Okay. okay. It's uh, it's nice and simple. And then like we mentioned earlier, I won't go over this again, it's client load balancing. So all the APs are going to talk to each other, which makes sure that we're getting the best performance for high density environments, which is which is paramount in schools, because you're going to have APs that are within proximity of each other to be able to load balance and take the load off certain APs, which is great when you've got APs situated between, let's say, four classrooms. So you've got one AP that might be covering four classrooms and the other one covering the further four. If everyone's suddenly situated into that four uh, but there's an AP that's just further down the corridor, they'll be able to load balance it and put that uh, that data onto that AP. Again, it's, it's all around, Ruckus's kit is all around how to give the best the best performance in high density environments. Uh, and finally, we go on to Airtime Fairness, which again is another part of all the, the bits of software that make sure that you get the, the, the best consistency when it comes to uh, high density environments, so constant connections. They're, they're kind of like my catchphrase now for the day is there will be a further webinar on how how airtime fairness works um, but it's literally going to be um, just a quick phrase so, so airtime fairness is, is a scheduling protocol so it used to be Henry that we would have an AP and you would uh, and if you were connected to the AP you would everyone would have to talk as the slowest person in that room right. so if you had someone who was at the far end of the building and on 2.4 gigahertz range until that person finished talking you, you couldn't no one can have a go on the access point until that point. Right. So what Airtime Fairness does is a way of giving everyone a fair share of the, the medium or a fair share of the, access, uh, of the AP in a, in a kind of scheduled process that means you, you get the ultimate performance. So you'll get like a, let, let's say for instance, like a five second um, window to talk to that access point. So then each device is getting dealt with in, in a far, um, you know, more optimum way of, of dealing with traffic. So that, that's Airtime Fairness. And Ruckus Wireless have got uh, their own kind of custom view on Airtime Fairness and, and the best way to run it for uh, for their access points and for high density environments. So that was kind of a brief look over some of the features about how Ruckus APs will differentiate from other uh, vendors on the market and make sure that you've got the, the best the best performing AP on the market for, for now and for, like bear in mind we need to make sure this is working in five or seven years time because it's a big investment. So we've got Beamflex, Channelfly, Smartcast. So Smartcast is a built-in quality of service kind of protocol, which we will be doing uh, more in deeper dives on that. Uh, but quality of service is, for Smartcast is it's going to make sure it processes video, voice, and data in a, in a set way to make sure that you always get the best results, which again, it's, it's done, it's in the box. You don't have to worry about setting up quality of service. Uh, Smart Mesh is a way that we can connect APs to other APs that can't actually be networked, cabled in. So I don't know if people spoke to you about that, Henry, if that was a problem. Uh, yeah, so they did touch on the fact uh, when it came to connecting um, internal sort of in-house APs to maybe outdoor APs, that yeah. sort of thing. Is that somewhere where Smart Mesh is possibly used? Yeah, or, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But yeah, that was certainly a, a sort of an area where they wanted to be sort of reassured that it could still happen and still take place and still work effectively yeah. as we do indoors. Yeah, great. So as long as we've got power and we can get power to the AP, we can make it connect to a, a root AP that's on the physical wired network. And we can do that. that. That's no problem at all. And that's called smart meshing. Real, real clever technology. Smart security, we're going to cover that in just a second. We're going to give you some working examples of how we allow devices to connect to the network on an individual basis and how they're monitored. Uh, and Hotspot 2. Hotspot 2 is a feature that it's not going to be right now for schools. It's more of an enterprise kind of uh, feature with like kind of carrier class uh, wireless but that will be something that we'll, you're seeing in the coming years happening to like more schools so bear in mind your ruckus kit can can support that 
and to reiterate those are all features that are just come with the with the APs with the technology it's not another license it is there yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely so what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at a quick so you're going to see live video examples of how easy it is to set up uh, an SSID uh, how easy it is to actually set up a guest access uh, and how easy it is to, to give someone guest access uh, there's one really good point there from uh, somebody watching saying that they've used smart mesh to cover environments like gyms or exam halls where they're quite big spaces maybe they have power but they don't have network connectivity absolutely yeah that's perfect that's an ideal example of how to use smart mesh um, so guest access so we're going to look into uh, live video now um, so video recorded earlier so we press play so now you're going to see the controller nice easy to use interface kind of intuitive or very intuitive so firstly what we're going to do is we're going to create the guest access so what this is is kind of the journey of we're going to create an open SSID which allows people to connect but we're going to say what's that going to involve what's going to that captive portal like a built-in captive portal going to be so go on the days of having to have like an Apache server or web server where you need to to create that separately. Ruckus Wise have made it so you can do it easily from the controller, nice and simply. So we create a, an object or a guest access service object. And this is this is going to be the captive portal like landing page. What, what's going to happen to that person when they land on this page? So we give it a title. At this point, we're going to enable so we can have uh, guest access. Uh, and we've, we can actually say that we want them to authenticate, be it via Active Directory or via a local database. Uh, and what we can also do is make sure when they've gone through the process of authenticating, we can redirect them to a, a web page. Normally, it would be like a school website. Uh, we've got the terms of use, so we can customize that to the school's uh, IT terms to make sure that we uh, are making sure that the people that go onto your guest network are abiding by your rules. Uh, not nice and easy. Uh, we can change the logo, so we can put your school logo on there. But the, the nice thing from the, from a, a security perspective is it instantly creates a wall garden for you. So it instantly makes that. The only captive portal page that they can land on is the one on the controller. All the other uh, IP addresses within class A, B, C on your network, are uh, they, they can't get to. So it's completely isolated. So we've now created that object. So that's what's going to happen on that open SSID. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to link to who we're going to allow to, to create guest passes. Um, so we can do this by Active Directory, but for this example we did it on a, a local database. Uh, and we're also going to make sure that we have got instructions if they're going to be in English, French, Spanish, or whatever they might be. Um, so firstly, next we're going to go to wireless LANs, and we're going to create the SSID for a guest access uh, a guest access uh, SSID. So what we're going to do is very simple. You just create new, give it a name. As you can see, what's going on there. Give it a description. Maybe try not to make a spelling mistake. But easily done. Don't go. You don't have to worry about too much about descriptions. I think I was just uh, trying to be too specific. And then you just click guest access. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put that object that we've we've got there. So we said right, this is what we want to happen when they land on this SSID. It's all going to be open because that's what an open SSID has to be. But then what you'll notice is it's instantly isolated. So it's isolated to ensure that no device on that network can speak to another device. And it's a simple case of pop, pop in the VLAN you want that to be on, and you're away, and you click OK, and that's instantly going to be broadcasted to all the radios that are connected to your controller. And what we'll see now is that device being connected. Uh, sorry, that, that, that SSID being broadcasted to all the radios. So you just go onto the controller, select the SSID that you've just created, and then you'll see within the events and activities that that's instantly being uh, broadcast. This is something that we use internally here. Yeah, this uh, is something we use here at our offices. And it works really well. So. so next what we're doing is what we're going to have to do is we want to make it so we've, we're using a local database. This could be linked to your Active Directory. Is What we're doing is we're creating a role that says, OK, if you're in part of this security group or this local database group, you will be allowed to create guest passes. So, it's, so much rather than having uh, one person, we can create a, a team of receptions, bursars, IT staff. It just keeps it yeah. nice and simple. Um, and it's just really nice and easy and intuitive. It's just how do I link this role to either a database on the, on the controller or my Active Directory or Radius or LDAP, whatever it might be. 
So we select the new guest access wireless LAN we've, we've created, and then we just select allow guest pass generation. So now we have a role that if you were using Active Directory, you would have linked the two group attributes together, which you saw earlier. But now what we're going to do is we're going to create a user on the local database. And what we're doing from here is we are creating a user, and then we will make sure that we give them the role that we've just created. Uh, this is a service that we use throughout all the schools we've worked with, and it just keeps it nice and easy and very user friendly. So all you would need to do is either have a local database or an Active Directory security group, and you've got a whole list of people that can create guest passes from the comfort of their desk. This, and it, this is something I do internally here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the number of the customers that come in, or, you know, vendors, it's as simple as uh, creating guest passes, um, just as uh, Dave's showing you there. Yeah, absolutely. So what we've just seen there is we've gone through the process of how easy it is to create an SSID, how easy it is to create a, a guest access portal that people can land onto, and then also how easy it is to create roles that we can either link to Active Directory or to a local database. What we're going to go on to next, well, we've got a question from Barry, it's just coming in. So we've got a great question here from Yusuf. Um, which is talking around using proxies in yes. uh, use with BYOD, yep. particularly the, uh, the WPAD, the, the ability to be able to apply proxy <laughs> settings, I think, by group policy and things like that. Yep. I think generally we would um, recommend it in line or, yep. or, or transparent proxies. What are your thoughts on that, David? Yeah, so it's a really good question. Uh, so with proxies, so with the BYOD environment, it's going to be difficult. If you, you can use WPAD files and that will work with the Ruckus controller. We can add those proxy settings on there. Uh, but bear in mind that with a WPAD file, that's only going to work with uh, certain browsers that might, might custom use, i.e. like Windows devices or Windows machines. Uh, so it, it can get a bit tricky. So then we start going down the realms of, oh, you'll need some sort of mobile device management system uh, that will have to push proxy settings on before you're allowed on the wireless network. And again, it gets more and more tricky. So our advice would be, if possible, where possible, um, you would have a, a, rather than having a forward proxy, we would make it so you'd have a, a transparent or an inline proxy. Uh, and there's a number of vendors that we work with that would, we would be able to help you with that. And all that would mean is that everyone is going through the, the web filter uh, instantly, uh, you don't have to worry about proxy settings because you're you're literally going through the filter without even knowing it. So that's a, that's a transparent uh, proxy. Uh, so to answer your question, you, you can do uh, WPAD, and that will work with a Ruckus controller. Um, but from experience, best the best way to solve the problem, especially with BYOD and, and the influx of devices you're going to have that you, you that you don't physically manage, uh, you, you'd you'd want to go for a transparent proxy. Okay, so you've seen, we've got, I hope that answers your question. We'll go on to the, the next video, uh, which we can see here. We should have just started playing. So now we're going to go to the person. We've created this user. We've got it linked to Active Directory or the local database. How easy is it to create a guest pass? And the, and the answer is really easy, really simple. So they enter in the URL or the IP address of the, the, the controller. So it could be IP or the DNS entry with a forward slash guest pass. They type in their username and password. This could be their AD or the local database. Then, then just go on to the, the box, fill in the form, so it's nice and easy. They select the guest SSID they want that person to have access to. Uh, and then they can either put an email address in, or a telephone number, because we can email the guest pass or SMS the guest pass. Uh, there's a feature on the box for, for SMS, but you would need to link it to a Clickertail or a Twilo account, which, which there are some free accounts you can do that with. Uh, and then what we do is we put in the key, so it will generate a standard key, or you can customize the key, because some of the keys are um, quite, quite hard for users to, to, to type in. Um, so what this means is then we've basically got a, each a user connected to the, the wireless SSID, but each user is connected with their own unique guest pass. So gone the days of having a WPA2 uh, environment where everyone knows how to get on. We've, we've, we've made it so it's secure, we've got control of each user, and we've got a nice, easy, simple setup so we can email them, SMS them, or we can just print out the instructions. And all that person has to do, is, which you'll see on the next video, is connect uh, and type in the password. So I'll go on to the next uh, slide, which you should be able to now see how easy it is for someone to connect. So that's where that's the, the view from my room uh, on the beach. Oh, not really, I wish. It's not that sunny here. Um, so we connect. We connect to the guest access uh, SSID that we created earlier. Uh, we can ignore that security alert. That's something completely separate. And what we'll do is we'll a captive portal page or a, on my second screen a page open up automatically, which will show the captive portal. So it's loading. They're being redirected instantly to the welcome to the guest access login page. They type in that guest pass that they've been 
Given? Hit login, and then we'll know. You, they can be make it so they can be redirected to the, the, the URL they're initially going to visit, but I always find it's easy. If you make it so they redirect to one of, a site that you know, it's a good way of practicing. But they have to ex agree to our terms and conditions that we created earlier, some of the custom ones. They, they connect, and then they'll be redirected to the www.computerworld.co.uk. And they're on, and they have wireless connectivity. And that's how easy it is to be able to make sure that we've got a guest access on board. We've, we've got someone who can create guest passes from the comfort of their own desk, and we can get someone who can just connect to an open SSID, and they're on the wireless nice and easy and nice and simple. So I hope you found those videos uh, helpful. So that's how easy it is to create guests. So the other kind of question is, how do we make it so we can have all our students connect to the wireless network, and we do it here, don't we, Henry, for all the yeah. staff? Yeah, we do. Is how can we make it so we've got staff devices that connect, that we want them to be able to connect on an individual basis to a certain SSID and give them a certain type of access? And we can do that with a Ruckus controller using a system called Dynamic Pre-Share Key, that's like slash zero IT. And what that is, is we, we get rid of the days of having a single WPA key. We can actually make it so users log in with their username and password from Active Directory. Mm -hmm. They log in, and then when they log in, they actually get a key from uh, the controller, which is associated to that person's MAC address. And then we can make sure we can say how long we want that key to last. It can be uh, a month, two months, three months, a year, unlimited. And we can also then say to uh, a student or a member of staff, we can limit how many of these keys are allowed per person. So we could say maybe one person, one device per person, two, three. Uh, and we can also limit the fact of how many, uh, what bandwidth they might have. Uh, what VLAN they might be on. But again, we'll, we'll, that'll be more deeper dives on how to get out of the out of the kit. Um, so what we're going to do now is look at the dynamic pre-share key and, and how that works on BYOD onboarding. So what we've got at the minute is we've got someone that they've they've got their I have to press play. Got their iPhone. So this is someone who's come onto the into our environment. We've got them to connect to an SSID that is similar to the guest access, but we've, we've created a different journey. So we're going to want them to be able to register uh, their device with their, their AD details. So they're going to scan the network. They're going to see BYOD onboarding. So we might give it a different name, but that, that's what they can see. And then with that, they'll open a browser. Could be Google, could be anything. And then they'll instantly be redirected to uh, a, a page, wireless.computerworld.co.uk. They type in their username and password. A file is then connected called the zero IT file is pushed onto that device. With an iPhone, you'll have to type in your PIN number, your personal PIN number. That profile won't be signed, that, that's standard because it's not from the App Store and that's, it's, you, it's impossible to do that. Uh, and then we will click done and that, that profile is then installed. So that person then, that device is being told which SSID to connect to. And it's also being told it's got a unique key to uh, that, that network. So you forget the, the onboarding network. Uh, with Android devices, you don't have to tell it to forget the network. It's an iOS trait, unfortunately. But that's the same for every system on the market. And then that device is then connected uh, automatically to the SSID that we wanted them to connect to. That there will be deeper dives on how we can then use the Ruckus technology to have one SSID but with multiple VLANs behind that so we can start being a little bit more clever about uh, broadcast traffic and how we can segregate different speeds or different access depending on which security group you're in. I think it highlights today we, we just did a, a poll to show how many, how often people change their wireless passwords? Yeah, um, and it was over fifty percent of the people watching right. said they never change their passwords. Yeah. Yeah. Um, only ten percent of them are using some other secure method. Yeah, um, another ten percent every month they would change them, and the final ten percent there was once a year. So by far the largest amount of people just don't change their passwords today. Yeah, about, that's right, and that's something we find a lot. But now with what the kind of access we're giving, if we've got mobile devices, we really need to have like a secure network. And if we want to monitor and be able to kick people off the network who shouldn't be where they're meant to be, then rather than having to change a password and then let everyone know about that password, we've actually got a system in place where we can take people off on an individual basis. And then it's a much secure and easier way to manage a network. And when it comes to, I'm sure Henry will tell you, like with the customers that you've got, that they're always looking for ease of management mm -hmm. and ease of monitoring, I guess. That's it, yeah. Again, it's, it's simplicity. It comes back to good simplicity. Um, and yeah, this just, we obviously have it internally and things like that, and it just, it's just easy. 
Yeah, exactly. So with that, we're going to go on to one of the other features that this is for a lot of people that might be listening that have got Ruckus Wireless already or um, uh, are interested in keeping their, their wireless network sco- uh, secure. Another factor of keeping it secure is it's, it's called, called WIPS, which is Wireless Intrusion Prevention, which is basically a service that, again, other vendors you'd you probably have to get an extra license for to get this to work. Um, with Ruckus, it's there. It's part of the, part of the firmware. And what it is, is it's a way of controlling uh, the environment that your your devices are connected to on your network. It's a way of keep keeping that secure and, and safe. So if we've got people that have maybe plugged in an AP that are trying to spoof an SSID to do like a man in the middle attack or a denial of service, or we've got a number of different types of APs that could be connecting that could be registering different SSIDs um, that might be giving out different DHCP addresses that could be causing a conflict. We need to work out how, how can we manage that. So, so with Ruckus, uh, it's got WIPs, which all the APs will monitor the environment and tell you what's going on. Uh, and then we can, it will send you an email and actually say, we've got this AP and it's doing this. And, and the next question is, a lot of people ask, well, well how does that work and, and what does it actually do? So we've got a quick video to demonstrate on how that works and also how we can control users and clients, what we were talking about earlier from generating keys and, and WIPs, uh, generating keys from uh, dynamic pre-share keys, sorry. So we'll go to uh, monitor, so we're going to go to the monitor tab, so it's nice and easy from left to right, dashboard, monitor, configure, administer, nice and simple, and we'll click on rogue devices, and then what you'll see is that we, we'll be able to see if there's rogue devices on the network, okay? So what you'll be able to see from the device is if there's a rogue access point, what are you going to do about that rogue access point? So we'll see on here, we've already kind of managed what's with all the rogue access points here. So I actually ended up unticking an access point to show you what that means. So you'll get given two access points or an SSID has been noticed that's being marked. And you've got the option to mark as malicious or mark as known. So as soon as you mark an AP as malicious or an SSID as malicious, what the zone director do is it's going to get the all the APs on the zone director are going to do is they're going to spoof the MAC address of that SSID and send deauthentication messages to all the devices on your network and it's going to say right don't connect to that and then what we can do is control control the network a, a bit better so what you can see now is we've gone so that that's how WIPs work so P, so if you're not using WIPs so that, that that's how you could get rid of problems of interference uh, there's some settings that we need to look at on your controller to make sure you're using that properly um, but if you do have any questions about WIPs l- let us know because that, there's some great features on your Ruckus controllers if you're not already using them if you do have them that will help phase that that problem of interference um, so we've now gone on to like gener- generated PSK cert so this is what we saw earlier from the uh, the video about that iPad that was connecting to our network. We, we can see here how are they how are they controlled um, so on here we can see a list of all the people that have got a um, they've got a, they've had a certificate or a key created for them uh, if we delete it from here that would then give that per- that would instantly remove that person from the network so everyone else is still able to connect and they can connect to the SSO they're meant to but if you delete someone from here that's that's you then controlling that person so you've got full control of each individual connection to your network which is really important when you go bring your own device and then you can see on the generated PSK cert or the generated PS key uh, I can just delete the key I created for myself delete it and that person instantly doesn't have an access so gone are the days of having to have the same key uh, and that's how we control all, the, all those those features. So that's kind of like just a light, very brief overview of the features. We've got stacks of features on the Ruckus Wireless Kit. We've got Bonjour Gateway features called Smartway, which helps us work with the the, the ongoing issues with Bonjour Gateway protocols and, and how we fence them and how we contain them. Which I think you you have a lot of people asking about how to control Bonjour, Bonjour Gateway protocols. Yeah, yeah, it does seem like it's a, a, a bit of a common theme. Yeah. Um, so yeah, certainly something we can we can touch on outside of this webinar, yeah. uh, another feature we can go into a bit more detail. Absolutely. So then we're wrapping up now, so I hope that you found that easier. That was that was basically some of the, the core features of Ruckus Wireless and how why it's been so popular in schools and why the Ruckus technology is, is fundamentally the, the number one choice for schools. It's going to be, make sure you get the best performance uh, the le- with the least amount of APs, which is really key. Uh, so often the next question is, okay, well, what's the next step? How can we, Computer World, help you get in touch with or get get used to using Ruckus Kit and work out if it's right for you. Uh, so what we're able to offer as a service, uh, and it's a, it's a standard free free of charge service, is what we do is we work with 
Ruckers Sewn Banner equipment, which we have here at Computer World in Bristol. We have Ruckers Sewn Banner software that if we would send you a questionnaire, which would ask you to give us as many details as possible about your site with regards to building materials, your kind of your, your plans for what you want to achieve from the wireless and some like kind of measurements. And then also uh, with regards to floor plans, you would then give, give us your floor plans. We can run a software over it called the Ruckers Zone Planner, which will then be able to give us a predictive site survey of how many APs your site would actually need. Now bear this in mind, the more details you give us with that Ruckus Predictive Site Survey questionnaire, the more data you give us, the, the better the, the Ruckus Zone Panel will be. And I think that's something you, we try and tell to all our customers, Henry, is it? The more data you put in, the better the results. Yeah, we'd always encourage to obviously give as much data as possible. Yeah. Um, like I said, it gets better results. It's a bit more accurate when it comes to, obviously, the, the, when it comes to crunch time, costing up the, the potential projects. Yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly the, the more you can give us, the, the better it is. Yeah. Absolutely. So we can go ahead, let us know. Uh, we'll be doing a follow-up email from the webinars about how to do that. Um, get in touch with us and we're able to actually do that. So all we need is your site plans, the fielding questionnaire once you've contacted one of the executives like Henry here, yep. uh, and they'll be able to then start the process. And we can give you a good idea of numbers of uh, APs that you would actually require. Bear in mind as well though, with predictive site surveys, uh, they're 80% accurate. So 80% because you're always going to need to do a physical site survey. Um, we've got uh, a few good questions that have come in here. Um, from uh, Nick Batchelor, can Ruckus uh, pass the user ID to the firewall so Transparent Proxy can make decisions based on a specific user or device? Yeah, you can do that. You can do it with Smoothwall and you can do that with Barracuda based firewall. So yes, the, the question is that we can do that. Yeah. Um, and you could also consider which VLAN you're dropping users to and make the decisions based upon a VLAN. Exactly. I would do it based on the VLAN of the subnet, so which is both the same thing. It would be easy to do it on that way. So we can do it via group policy or, or VLAN or subnet. That's no problem at all. Uh, the next question is, uh, what is the advantage of a dynamic PSK versus traditional 802.2.1x based on AD user? Really good question. So dynamic PSK and 802.1x radius, is ex they're pretty much the same. It's just if you're confident in you've got a radius set up on site and you can work with radius, then let the ruckus kit controller work with radius. If you're not, this was a feature that was made to work with ruckus um, users or, or IT techs that made it easier. Okay, um, so I hope that answers that question. With the uh, the next slide, it's, it's let the kit do the talking. We we are confident. We know that if you actually test Ruckus kit, you'll see the performance, you'll see the results, and that will make it easier for you to actually uh, make that informed decision. Because we want you to speak to other vendors. We want you to speak to other uh, wireless manufacturers. We know that when you actually test the kit versus our kit at Ruckus Wireless, that you will uh, be impressed, that you will see the results. And, and that's why we're, we're pretty confident that we know that with every site project that we've had, the proof of concept's just, just shown why it's so popular. And I think you found out a lot of your customers? Yeah, definitely. Uh, as it says on the slide, let the kit do the talking. Um, one thing I'd encourage, obviously, to work with us uh, closely on it. Um, you know, the last thing we want to do is set up a proof of concept in the wrong area, and then you blame the kit for it not yeah. working. So, um, it, you know, we can obviously help you out with those uh, sort of proof of concepts yeah. uh, and make sure uh, it's all set up perfectly. And, and let the kid do the talking, yeah. Yeah, excellent. So, so we've got um, one more question here. Um, I'm not quite sure how to, we'll be able to get on this, is what is to stop someone that's connected via a ruckus access point running something like a loft crack, so a password uh, hack or something like that, a, a kind of a, a digital yeah. password attack? I mean... <coughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question. At a certain point, we've got to consider a network protection element yeah, uh, and it's outside of the wireless capabilities, but I don't know where that crossover is. Yeah, well, there is a number of services on there that if there are um, different types of number of requests, so if you make a number of requests that you're failing, which you're doing like a brute force attack, then the AP will stop that connection, and the AP will then inform the controller, and the controller will inform the, the staff, and we can make it so that will be blocked. Um, there are other <laughs> we, there are other ways to if you really want to try and crack uh, passwords. There's always a way, but you, you need to have the network security in place. But there are ruckus features that would, would prevent that. But uh, I'll be happy to talk to that person who answered that question um, and show you some slides of, of maybe a way of stopping that from happening. Definitely, I think we've got two security concerns. Yeah. One is stopping users getting onto the wireless and somehow running a password hack attack yeah. to get on the wireless. Yeah. Um, which I think would be Ruckus's responsibility. Yep. The other is a user abusing the network once they have safely onboarded onto the network, which 
that there may be some functionality inside Ruckus. Yeah. But we do need to be looking at the wider networking capabilities on our network, maybe. Yeah. And we're happy to go over the security features, but uh, that's no problem. We can we can go over the security features with you on a, on a one to one basis at any point. That's no problem at all. Uh, so to finish up, you can see the final slide. Uh, it, it, Ruckus always wins. You're, you're going to see Aruba, Cisco, Airhide, Meraki, number of other vendors. You will always see that Ruckus wins on independent trials. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Wireless Land Professionals website, they'll be able to confirm that. If you go to the Syracuse University uh, details, uh, all public information, you'll see that Ruckus Wireless uh, for uh, throughput will always for just performance will always win uh, and that's why we're really passionate about Ruckus Wireless here and we hope that um, you'd like to kind of learn more about it learn more about it with us we're going to be doing lots of webinars throughout the next year two years three years on how to always get the most out of your Ruckus kit so I hope that's been really informative uh, and if you do have any questions please let us please get to us and we'll get back to you as, as soon as we can